Hello there, you're tuned in to 7 edition this Thursday. I'm Otto Othman and these are your headlines. Police are to impose cash transaction limit of 25,000 ringgit starting next year. We can go to war, but we will lose the war. And we will lose the law. Government working hard to bring back Joe Lowe. Mu Su Chua to be sent to third country. Malaysia is planning to impose a cash transaction limit or CTL of 25,000 ringgit starting next year to further strengthen the country's financial integrity. Bank Negara Malaysia Deputy Governor Dato Rashid Gafur said this is to address the abuse of physical cash used for illicit activities. However, industries with large cash transactions such as high-value dealers, medical tourism, hotels and wholesale are exempted from the CTL. This exemption is to balance the genuine needs of industries with a large cash transaction. The move would not affect households as engagement with over 1,000 individuals across the country revealed that large single cash transactions on average were 2,284 ringgit to 7,843 ringgit. In January, BNM lowered the daily cash threshold risk report CTR from 50,000 to 25,000 ringgit. Up to September 2019, over 5 million CTR reports were received, representing about 483 billion ringgit in cash transactions. A senior Cambodian opposition figure, Mu Su Chua, who was detained on arrival at the KLIA today, has been released by the Immigration Department. She tried to fly home for the planned return of her exiled party leader, Sam Rainsy. Members of the opposition were trying to get back to Cambodia to support Rainsy, who wants to make a dramatic end to his exile this weekend. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, however, said it is Malaysia's principle to not interfere in the internal affairs of other countries and that Mu Su Chua will be sent to another country that can take her. He explained that the government does not want others to use Malaysia as a abuse for their struggle in other countries. Malaysia does not want to be at odds with other governments as this is their own affairs. Mu Su Chua is the vice president of the banned opposition Cambodian National Rescue Party. She fled, had flown, to, flown in from Jakarta where the Cambodian ambassador had stormed a press conference she was giving and attempted to get the event cancelled. Now, the government is working hard to get information on Joe Lowe in the 1MDB scandal. The Prime Minister, however, said the country must accept that it lacks the strength to go against certain countries that are harboring the fugitive businessmen. We can go to war, but we will lose the war, and we will lose Joe Lowe. We are conscious that we are not a very strong nation. Sometimes people are nice to us, sometimes they are not, but we have to accept. I am told that he may carry several passports. I am also told that he may have undergone some um, alteration to his face and all that. All these things are rumours. I have no proof, but it could happen, and that makes it difficult for us to trace him. The Premier was commenting on a suggestion that authorities should consider clandestine measures to bring the fugitive businessman back for trial. Tun Dr. Mahade also said he is unaware if the wanted man is hiding in the east or the west, saying the Inspector General of Police, Tan Sri Abdul Hamid Bado, only updates him as and when needed instead of giving him constant reports. 
It was reported recently that Zhou Lo had secured a Cypriot citizenship. It was also claimed that he was hiding in the United Arab Emirates, but the police have dismissed these speculations. Meanwhile, Tun Dr. Mahadir hit back at AMNO President Dato Sri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi over the latter's comments that Attorney General Tommy Thomas was biased in deciding which cases to drop and which to charge. He said Dato Sri Zahid did not question Thomas' predecessor, Tan Sri Apandi Ali, when the former AG failed to haul up Dato Sri Najib Raza over the latter's role in the 1MDB financial scandal. Masa dulu waktu ada orang curi duit, bos dia curi duit, dia tak boleh langsung. Sekarang ini putri kan nak boleh. Bila balik bagi tanya peringat diri sendiri. Kenapa kamu kalah? Kamu kalah pasal kamu tidak boleh bos kamu. Yesterday, Datuk Sri Zahid questioned the acquittal of a woman who was charged with the death of eight teenage cyclists in Johor in 2017. In his chirama, the AMNO president also blamed Tommy for the release of the suspects in the death of firefighter Muhammad Adib Muhammad Qasim last year during a fracas at a temple in Seafield. Usually the term basika laja or mat laja isn't associated with something positive. In fact, they're usually considered a menace to society. But the Youth and Sports Ministry believes there is talent in this community. And today, Said Sari Said Abdul Rahim Rahman said the government will be tapping into that talent. He has plans to train these mat laja at the National Youth Skills Institute so that one day they can be cycling champions. The minister explained that there are two types of mat laja, one who likes to modify bicycles while the other prefers the need for speed. Those with modifying skills can be taught in the mechanical and design industry, where they can learn how to make better safety features, while those who yearn for speed can be trained to participate in competitive racing. Uh, we've already uh, run many, many different cycling workshops with the bicycle laja group. For example, uh, because again, if you just build a circuit without getting the actual expertise to train them, it becomes an issue because if you look at how they modify their bikes, a lot are very much unsafe because they have no brakes and usually they don't wear any safety equipment. Said Sadek said his ministry will get input from various stakeholders and communities to ensure these cyclists' passion be put in the right place. He's for new laws to act against workshops or individuals providing modifications to transform bicycles into bicycle lajak. Police say a drug trafficking syndicate has been crippled with the arrest of seven individuals, including the kingpin, in three raids in Klang Selango on Monday. About 17 kilograms of drugs worth 1.76 million ringgit were also seized. Kalau kita tengok uh, kepada jumlah rampasan, bermana uh, penggunaan uh, kita telah menyelamatkan uh, penggunaan sebanyak. Uh, 10,400 orang pengguna untuk satu hari. Maknanya kalau uh, syabu ni digunakan untuk dalam tempoh satu hari, maknanya 10,400 orang perlu guna. Manakala pay ekstasi, pay ekstasi dengan jumlah 30,000. Kebiasaannya kalau orang boleh guna pay ekstasi, dia sebiji satu hari. So maknanya 30,000 orang. The syndicate had been active since early this year, getting drugs from another distribution syndicate in the Klang Valley to sell at nightclubs. Police are hunting for the arrest of the syndicate members as well as the group that had been supplying the drugs to this syndicate. All the suspects aged between 24 and 50 have been remanded until Monday. Also tonight, Plus Malaysia Berhad has been told to rethink its decision to close the touch-and-go reload facilities at all its toll plazas. Economic Affairs Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali urged Plus to take into account the views of users who disagreed with the move. Yes, I kira pandangan daripada pengguna itu penting diberikan perhatian kerana kemudahan-kemudahan yang disiapkan itu adalah untuk memberikan keselesaan kepada pengguna lebuh raya 
keputusan untuk menutup lorong tambah nilai itu mungkin keputusan yang diambil oleh pengurusan dan saya berharap pengurusan dapat meneliti semula keputusan tersebut dengan mengambil kira pandangan daripada pengguna lebuh raya dan mereka harus menyediakan pilihan bagi kemudahan pengguna lebuh raya. Plus announced that it had closed the reload facilities for touch and go at the toll plaza exit lanes starting from yesterday. This was done to reduce traffic congestions caused by those reloading their cards. At the courthouse, a retired teacher was charged with cheating ICS trillion worldwide grand of over 151,000 ringgit. 56-year-old Wong Kim Yuan pleaded not guilty. The accused, who is a computer programmer, allegedly convinced an individual to bank in the amount into his bank account to build a website for the company. He, however, failed to complete the project as promised, causing the company to suffer financial losses. The court allowed bail at 8,000 ringgit and set December 10th for remission. Russia's FSB security service has identified 2,000 Russian nationals who are relatives of militants in the Middle East. They claim that these people could try to return to Russia posing a terrorist threat. FSB Director Alexander Bortnikov said such people try to reach Russia after leaving conflict areas in the Middle East via humanitarian corridors. The comments come weeks after an estimated 50 Russian women disappeared after fleeing from a prison camp for the, for the wives and children of Daesh fighters in northern Syria. According to Russia's human rights chief Tatyana Moskalkova, Russian-speaking women in the Middle East pose as a valuable asset for terrorists, especially if they turn out to be a capable recruiter. Over the past two years, 21 women and 105 children had returned to Russia. About 1,000 students, many wearing black masks, attended a graduation ceremony at the Chinese University of Hong Kong on Thursday with some holding up banners urging Free Hong Kong, Revolution Now. The students defied a ban on masks that the government imposed last month in a bid to curb unrest that has rocked the Chinese-ruled city for more than five months. Dressed in formal graduation gowns, many of the students chanted as they walked from a metro station to the ceremony venue, calling for the government to respond to protesters' demands that include universal suffrage. The university said it suspended the ceremony after the degrees were handed out. The protests started over a now-scrapped extradition bill that would have allowed people to be sent to mainland China for trial but have evolved into calls for greater democracy and an independent inquiry into complaints of excessive force by police, among other demands. Months of sometimes violent anti-government protests have plunged the former British colony into its biggest crisis in decades, with no sign the demonstrators plan to give up. At the root of many protesters, indignation is what they see as Chinese meddling with Hong Kong's promised freedoms. China denies doing so and has blamed Western countries for stirring up trouble in the financial hub. Russian airstrikes killed at least seven civilians in northwestern Syria Wednesday, while 20 others were also injured. The attack occurred in the militant-run enclave of Idlib. Now, Wednesday's strike was the second of its kind in less than a week, after a Russian raid on the village of Jabala on Saturday killed six civilians, including one child. At the site of the attack, White helmet rescue workers were seen rushing to find survivors, some seen carrying limp bodies of victims blanketed in fine dust from the blast. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which relies on sources inside Syria, says it determines who carries out an airstrike according to flight patterns as well as aircraft and munitions involved. The Idlib region is home to some three million people, including many displaced by Syria's eight-year civil war and is controlled by the country's former al-Qaeda affiliate.
Now let's hop on to Clickbait where we take a look at what's trending and making the rounds in the cyber world today. Now what's the use of having a boat that vacuums garbage out of the river if people are going to merrily throw it back in? A man who prefers to be addressed as Ahmad managed to record tons of garbage being casually dumped into the Klang River by irresponsible lorry drivers. The video was posted on Sinar Haryan and garnered over 170,000 views. Take a look. The three-ton lorry that carried domestic waste captured in the video was believed to have slipped into the area at Taman Medan through a gateway nearby. Allegedly, the site caretaker would allow certain lorries to pass through and litter there. Ahmad stated that it has been five years since the activity started and although it stopped for a while, residents have observed that the lorries have started to move back and forth from the site for a few days now. He added that the activity, which started with only five lorries, has now become more than 20 lorries and can be seen dumping their waste into the river without feeling any guilt. Ahmad wasn't sure whether the caretaker would collect money upon every entry or not. However, an excavator was prepared by the riverside to sweep remaining waste into the river, probably to cover up the illegal activity. Ahmad insisted that something has to be done because the residents cannot tolerate the sight of the river being polluted with tons of domestic garbage every day. Now updated as of 7 p.m., here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Welcome back. China and the United States have agreed to cancel in phases the tariffs imposed during their months-long trade war. The Chinese Commerce Ministry said this on Thursday without specifying a timetable. An interim U.S.-China trade deal is, ex is widely expected to include a U.S. pledge to scrap tariffs scheduled for December 15th on about 156 billion U.S. dollars worth of Chinese imports, including cell phones, laptops and toys. The ministry added that the tariff cancellation was an important condition for any agreement and both must simultaneously cancel some tariffs on each other's goods to reach a phase one trade deal. Borsa Barisa ended the session at an intraday high after it climbed at the 11th hour following the announcement by both the U.S. and China that they have agreed to cancel additional tariffs imposed on one another. The benchmark FBM KLCI was 0.38% higher at 1,609.33 compared with Wednesdays. On to stocks to watch. RCE Capital Berhad's gross loans are expected to grow by mid-single digits and the profit spreads are expected to expand thanks to falling cost of funds. The RCE is favored for its cheap valuations, high return on equities and high dividend yields. Next. Astro Valencia Holdings Berhad is appreciated for its high dividend yields and as the prime beneficiary of a potential clampdown on Android TV boxes. And last but not least, Sunway Construction Group falls short of market expectations at only 63 to 67 percent of full year concessions estimates. It is believed that the key earnings drag will come from the slow progress in the LRT3 project. The company guided for works on the latest transit line is expected to pick up from the fourth quarter of 2019 as the contract renegotiations and design changes are still pending.
History was made yet again after the Yang Dibetuan Agong, Sultan Abdullah Rehaituddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah, was awarded the prestigious AFC Diamond of Asia. This in recognition of his contributions spanning more than three decades to football in the continent and at the international level. The award was presented by AFC President Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa at Istana Negara Kuala Lumpur earlier today. In a statement, the Asian Football Confederation noted that Sultan Abdullah developed an interest in football at a young age, and his impact has been instrumental in raising the standards of the game in Asia. His Majesty is the 15th recipient of the award and joins his late father, Sultan Ahmad Shah Al Musta'in Billah, the 2011 recipient, as the only father and son duo to be bestowed the highest individual accolade in Asian football history. In paying tribute to his late father, His Majesty said he is happy to be able to honor his father's legacy. Sultan Abdullah continued to serve FAM as vice president in 2007 and again from 2010 to 2014, before holding the post of president in 2014, where he introduced a comprehensive range of programs to boost and develop the sport in the country.